welcome to my voices after Rhett, and that's why we made it. It's 2021. Hashtag 2021. My name is Dan Zarin. Let's get started here. So, so today's episode is brought to you by Games Studio, where we are recording, The Secret Cellar, Iceland's first and only comedy club, and Smaldi's Volcano Sauces, the greatest hot sauces I've ever had in my life. Now, joining me today for this episode uh, are two of my very dear friends, and this is actually the first episode of the year, too. Uh, so uh, let's just welcome Thodaler Thodotson and Stepnet Benedictson. Hey, how you doing? I am fantastic. Honestly, I'm not, I'm just glad we made it. Yeah. 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 We all survived. Ozzy Osbourne survived. Wow. He, no one saw that coming. No. 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 But he, well, yeah. But he's alive. He's we made alive. it. We he's all alive. made it. I just wow. I, I, I yeah. And uh, and as as the year states, uh, the 20, 20, uh, 2021 is victorious because it's twenty twenty has won. Yeah, that's uh, uh, so. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, yeah. I guess we have to face it. Yeah, yeah. But how are you guys doing? How, how are you guys feeling? Well, okay. <laughs> Just okay. <laughs> okay. You guys excited for the vaccine? Sure. Yeah, I really am. No, 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 no. I really am. Uh, I think it's gonna be great. Uh, but uh, I'm a little worried that it's gonna take so long that we're gonna be quarantined for like. Yeah, another I don't know six to nine months or whatever, and uh, being as yeah. bored as I've been, I don't know if I could take it. <laughs> no. Well, aren't you a little bit worried though? With with uh, because it's a vaccine, aren't you a little worried that the vaccine might cause autism? No, I already had that. <laughs> <laughs> I basically like when I when I was planning this this uh, episode, I was basing it around that one joke. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So You've been excited for three cross. days. It's all downhill from here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure I I will ke- uh, get like a defected one, uh, and it's like, oh, there's like one one pass that is bad, and I'll get that. You know, I love I love that. Yeah. Normally, like yeah. I would say, this is just your anxiety being your anxiety. Yeah. But you do have really strange bad luck. I I do oh. I do. That's why I have anxiety. <laughs> Like we got, we got the N64 working, uh, recently. And then you just like walked in the room and it froze. Yeah, I know it happens. That's, that's, that's my life. We were trying I, to figure out how that was even possible. Yeah. I, I don't know how many times in my life I've heard the sentence. This is not supposed to happen. This has never <laughs> happened before. Like dealing with, de- dealing with something in, in the bank or just something. If, if there's some computer involved, they have to lock th- something in or something and then everything just crashes and they're like this has never happened before i was like this happens to me six times a day <laughs> six times a day so so what you're saying is in 2008 when the big economic crash happened in iceland yeah. everyone was going wow i mean this has never happened before and you're just walking around going i knew it yeah i knew, I knew it. it it's it's because it's, it's because <laughs> of me i'll leave i'll leave <laughs> I get the same thing at the store. Whenever I'm in line, uh, somebody has to go check for, it's either me or the person in front of me. They have to go check for like a barcode or, or the computer freezes or some shit. So my line is always the slowest fucking line. Yeah. Yeah. See, later, lately for me, it hasn't been oh, that at the supermarket. What I've been having the bad luck of is getting the, like, like the, the, like Iceners that don't, like give a fuck about anything Mm -hmm. so like there's there's a pandemic going on and i get the ones standing behind me that have like the mask under their nose and they're standing like obnoxious yeah and standing obnoxiously close to me yeah and i'm I'm just like like dude dude that's the fucking greenest like are you (laughs) are you kidding me (laughs) i've i picked up on that trick though though being being in uh an outlander as they call them in iceland (laughs) iceland people that are not icelandic yeah uh being not self-absorbed at all no not at all it's us and the outlanders that's the rest (laughs) of the world but i found it i found i found like an iceland hack If, if if you're a foreigner living in iceland just learn like a cup a small handful of phrases in icelandic yeah and the Icelanders will leave you alone because if, if someone gets too close to me and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? They'll be like, ah, fucking, I, a fucking outlander. <laughs> but if I, but if I, if I go to them and I'm like, it's you fucking green us. They're like, oh, fair to get there. Fair to get there. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll move away. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> Hacking Iceland in one <laughs> syllable or two. Know how to swear in Icelandic. 
That is actually yeah. that. Is, what is <laughs> because there are some great swears in Iceland in yeah. Icelandic. Yeah. There are some bad ones, but there are some great ones. Yeah. What uh, what the my, my voices have swear words. Uh, what <laughs> what are your favorite Icelandic swear words? I mean, most of them are though kind of re- religious. They they're not really you know they're always like about hell, damn, like uh, and the devil. Yeah, it's it's a yeah. different version of the, of just the word devil. Helvitis tuvis is unskotans. You know, yeah, still, yeah. Yeah. I, I used to work at a farm as a teenager, and sometimes when the when the farmer had like a bad time or something, he'd go and say, "Do you ever this hell with this unscot as hate of the hell with thee?" And <laughs> long ramble rambles, and you know, I was ten years old sitting there and sponging it in, so I can go, I can go for a minute and a half of this stuff. You know? <laughs> And it's it, a, yeah, it's basically just like hell, damn, damn, hell, hot is hell, yeah. damn, hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just when you when you said that this happened on a farm, I just imagined like like a, a really like southern like hick American <laughs> just just like being like ah goddamn motherfucker, god <laughs> son of a bad damn motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, he was wearing overalls and boots, so I mean, <laughs> redneck. Yeah, there fuck. you go. Yeah. yeah. But we, but anyway, ah, but what are your favorite? So the, are those your favorite swear words? I mean, I think I, I usually go for unscottish or halvitis, yeah. Those are, yeah. those are popular yeah. ones. Uh, yeah. yeah. I do, I, I do like, I think it's, it's a horrible word, oh. but, but I love how much my mom loves the word teak. Teak, yeah. Teak, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which in Ice, yeah. is the Icelandic word for bitch, but, yeah. but my mom just finds it so adorable. Teak. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, and a really bad one to call a woman here is Belia. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a cow. awful. That's just cow, you know. Ah. When, you, when you say a woman is a cow in Icelandic, that's a huge insult. You know, this is Belia. Ah, damn. <laughs> yeah, that it's damn cow. That, the damn it's always cow. with that accent on it with the Belia. Yeah, yep. you know, <laughs> Belia. The yeah. pronounced B. like that really overpronounced B. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My 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 mom though, she's always, oh, always like, uh, oh, like if someone just is even just a little bit rude, she'll she'll just be like, oh, that person was such a teak. <laughs> and I'll I'll be like, mom, I don't know if you're if you're trying to be rude or you're mocking my Tourette's. <laughs> so wow, well, one of the two. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so what? Uh, but but it is 2021. Um, yeah, well. we did get through this oh, kind of to. To just kind of do, I want to start this off with kind of like an overview of 2020, though, because I mean, when it all began, everyone was kind of like, "Oh, this is the worst thing ever. We're we're not going to survive this. I just give up," you know, right off the bat. But to be fair, I mean, there were some good things that happened. Yeah, you, I mean, yeah, you didn't have to meet people. You didn't have to meet people. <laughs> <laughs> just, just very straight, true, yeah. very true. Yeah. just straight up your your mind of fuck people. Yeah. Like yeah. that was the best part of yeah. the year. I mean, it, it started out that, that way, and but it's a little bit maybe too much, you know. Seeing seeing that your medicine for for when you have to see people is alcohol. Do you find <laughs> that you drank more or less in 2020 <laughs> than you have usually? I've, I've been sober for nine months now. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is this is the thing. Like, I uh, I mean, because because we've all been out of work. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, I walk I walk by the by the out like the out, the the you know Vinbuden the alcohol store. Yeah. No, I'm just like, how the hell can people afford this much? Like, people are walking out boom, with like cases and cases, yeah. and yeah. I'm just like, dude, you're not working. How are you doing this? You you get mm. if you need. <laughs> money for alcohol you can always find money for alcohol it's like it's like, it's like the whole where true. there's a will there's a way where there's alcohol there is a way yeah. and, yeah. And, it, yeah. and it's kind of, it's kind of like because here you can like then you can take the cans to the sorpa and get money for the, for the cans and then you can buy more beer and then you go you know it's it's a it's so you're just a, doing it, rotations yeah 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 oh, you're just doing the rotations <laughs> bah, back to the stop <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> That's one of those vicious circles that's actually kind of nice. Yeah. <laughs> but there, I mean, there, the, other than that, there have, there have been some good things. I mean, one thing that I will say that I liked about about, about the oh, like the the oh, like staying at home and all that stuff mm-hmm. is it kind of made people think differently about what they're doing. You know, yeah. like I think I yeah. mean, it, I wish there wasn't you know a virus, but at the same same time, 
Oh, like it is cool because because of the thing that the, the all right the the you know staying at home part's cool, not the the virus part. But but what was cool about that is God got you thinking like okay, well I can't be working, but but I want to I want to keep doing what I do. Mm-hmm. So how do I do it? Well, while not being able to work, and I think yeah, I think, it's about creativity for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's the thing is like, you know, then you got to get people going, well, what about Zoom? We can do a lot of stuff on Zoom. And I I don't think that's going to stop. I don't think the no. Zoom thing is going to stop just because the, the pandemic will be over. I think people are going to like, I think for stand up, for example, I think there's going to be a lot more of well, like not streaming necessarily to YouTube, but streaming to to uh, to, to Zoom calls mm-hmm. calls. So maybe they'll have like the Zoom, like the audio muted so you just hear the audience in person but everyone that that wants to pay like that maybe is in a different country or or can't go out maybe they're sick but they still want to see a comedy show they can see it virtually mm-hmm. yeah yeah and i mean we're also going to see like uh, sociological changes because because now people realize that you don't have to you know you don't actually have to go to the office and you don't actually have to do things that you've been doing and uh, I hope that it's going to have an environmental, you know, aspect to it if we get political on the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think that's going to lead to to a, a I actually think that's going to lead to an antisocial well, like issue. Mm. Um, because <laughs> I mean, to be fair, we never needed to ever meet in person after the after like, you know, messaging and emails and all that stuff was was invented we never needed to meet but you you want to meet because it's better to talk in person you know face to face it's better it's yeah. better to get that communication and even yeah. just get out and get the energy yeah. of god getting up and doing something yeah. It, it yeah. is better and i think people are going to lose that from well, from from this because they're going to be like well we don't have sure. to now yeah it's yeah. gonna be like the movie wally true. <laughs> yeah yeah it might have, it might lead to that yeah and I, and I, but I think, but I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's affected me in that way that, uh, you know, I live alone and I used to go to the cellar, like, I don't know, three, four nights a week and meet people and hang out and talk and blah, blah, blah. Now I'm, you know, alone at home. I figure I'd much rather, you know, extend my bubble to my sisters and <laughs> hang out there, even though she has a bunch of kids who are, you know, as you know, kids are like farts. You could barely stand your own. <laughs> uh, but uh but and, the same, take, and it's the same smell yeah i know right they smell the same yeah <laughs> <laughs> but, but i I'll, I'll take that you know just to be able to hang out with other adults you know what i mean yeah right of course i mean i mean we all miss karaoke <laughs> oh do we ever yeah absolutely my I voice mean- has even changed you know, I, I talk at a higher pitch now than I used to do when I did karaoke three, four nights a week. Join the, you know, join the club. <laughs> wow. Right? I'm out of practice, so I don't have the same vocal range anymore. It just sucks. I'm scared. Well, my, my voice is at a higher pitch, but that, that's not being out of practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I, 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 I don't I, think anybody misses me doing karaoke, though. That's I do, actually. <laughs> I don't, no, I, I miss you doing karaoke. Yeah. yeah, I miss the dancing. Yeah, yeah. It's not the singing, but the dancing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I miss messing with you. That, that was the thing I miss about you doing yeah. karaoke, because you would go up and we're like... You would never know that you're tur- like that. You signed up for karaoke. No, I never signed up. I just, no. I, I was just would hear my name. Next those days, I was like, "Why? Come on! Why? I don't want to do that." And, you know, and then he goes on stage, and it's either I'm too sexy for my dude, and it's either that or or I know that my heart will go on. Oh, that's that's terrible. Yeah. Or ski ba 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 ba. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. that's kind of funny. Yeah. Scott yeah. 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 I will say though the one th- one thing though that oh, that kind of sucked about oh, the quor- totally. quarantining is like as a comedian, oh, I told myself I was going to take the time and really work on some new materi- material, get some good stuff. And the only thing I've come up in this ent- with this entire time hmm. is an alternate version of "To Be with You" by Mr. Big for for a ringtone, <laughs> like like having a ringtone is "Hold on, motherfucker, <laughs> someone's on the phone right. for you," <laughs> and that's all I fucking yeah. came up with. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I was gonna yeah, write about yeah. my. Yeah. I was gonna write about our my trip to Finland, and I was gonna write about so much stuff, but I've just yeah. been 
Binging shows. I even I even fell into Grey's Anatomy for a while. You know. Oh so, shit! It's been oh. horrible. I've actually been <laughs> watching that because because uh, uh, my girlfriend Alex has been watching that, and uh, she's 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 just like binge watching it. Yeah. I mean, I can only take yeah. so much drama in real life being friends with comedians yeah. and then getting <laughs> getting a whole show where it's literally the same as being friends with comedians. It's yeah. that much drama. Is it that much? Oh my God. It's that much drama. Oh, wow. That's a lot of drama. Shit. I, I, was, lot th- of- I was thinking though, because we were watching, uh, uh, not, not too long ago when uh, we were watching it and there's a, a doctor, I think it's, it's uh, Dr. Burke and uh, he, he has a tremor in his hand and he still does oh, like, right. he, Oh, still does surgery. Well, he he, he lost he lost his uh his job be- uh from the show because uh like in real life the actor uh used a homophobic slur to one of the other actors. Uh, so there's like a whole big thing with him. Bah, but the character oh, had a tremor, and the whole time I was watching that going. So it's possible. <laughs> like my hand, was, like my hand shakes from dreads to drop <laughs> standing there, I'm sitting there, my hand shaking, and I'm like. So what you're saying is I could have been successful. Wow. <laughs> I, could, I could have been a doctor. I could have had a, I could have had a job in medicine. <laughs> I could have yeah. done this this whole time. Oh. <laughs> Isn't he not Mac? It wasn't everybody like Mac Dreamy, Mac Steamy, Mac. Oh, yeah, there was, there was me and McDre- Mac Dreamy and Mac Steamy. Uh-huh. And, uh, and then, and then I left to take a Mac Steamy. <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> hey, oh. But I'm not, I, I don't, I don't get this. Here's the thing. I, now, like I'm okay with a little bit of drama. I mean, I I love the show Supernatural. I'm okay with a bit of drama. Mm. But when it comes to Grey's Anatomy, where it's like it's like like every five minutes, you're not sure what's going to happen, and and it's always going to like like tug at your heartstrings. Or it's just going to cut them out. Sure. Or you know, yeah. like like we got to a part where like a beloved character uh, got 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 like thrown in front of a bus, or like threw himself in front of a bus to save someone and died. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, and you enjoy this, Alex? And she's just like <laughs> crying her eyes out, going, "Yes, it's the best." <laughs> I'm like, Why? It's like emotional porn. <laughs> yeah, like five yeah. minutes ago, everyone was having a good time, and now their best friend is dead. What the hell? Yeah, just, just like real life. Yeah. I, I guess uh, I guess that's uh, why that's what 2020 felt like yeah. every five minutes I was just like what's gonna happen next oh another, <laughs> when are the another bus coming? oh another bus oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> yeah don't you feel sad for the people that didn't die of corona <laughs> Whoa. Just an accident or something yeah yeah <laughs> maybe that was too harsh I'm sorry yeah. I'm sorry well I'm I mean if, if we're gonna if we're gonna go trigger warning part here i mean like one one thing i have noticed because uh like um uh i i uh I, like throughout the year i talked to like a few of my friends that that like me have, have suffered from like intrusive suicidal thoughts for our whole lives uh, and i was talking to them and like all of us kind of agreed that well one nice thing about 2020 was it actually uh, uh helped prevent us from killing ourselves because we didn't want people to think corona was the reason right <laughs> Right. Like, I mean, if we're gonna, if we're gonna take our lives, we're gonna take our lives because fuck the world, you know, like, fuck life I'm, and all I'm that stuff. I'm gonna get the credit for that. Yeah, I'm I want. Gonna... I want the credit. I don't want Corona <laughs> taking some more goddamn credit for something that I am perfectly strong enough to do on my own. That's horrible. That's horrible. But that, yeah, but, like okay. I said, trigger warning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but there have been other good things that happened because because of, you know in not because of 2020, but in. 2020 i mean it, it got it did get people the chance to work on stuff stuff it did get people to you know stay home and all that stuff but it also i mean it did strengthen communication a little bit yeah i mean that and that, that's something i had always struggled with well was was being in touch with people you know staying in touch and, um. and all of that stuff but with 2020 what else is there to do than talk to people <laughs> exactly yeah i've had a lot you know? of that yeah yeah I I wish started, I did, uh, you know because Sometimes you just want to, you know, crawl into a cocoon and not think about anything anymore because, you know, you got, you know, COVID anxiety and all that crap, you know, so maybe days go by and you don't talk to anybody. And then, you know, you you talk to everybody, then you feel bad about not talking to anybody. So you talk to everybody in the same day and then you go, I can't call them tomorrow too. (laughs) Well, what kind of cocoon? I mean, you may be on to like a real, really, really <laughs> like, like crazy, crazy, epic, uh, millennial product here. I mean, sleeping bag in the shape of a cocoon. 
No, not just like a sleeping bag, but like yeah. basically a bed. I would love that. Feels right? safe. You're like wrapped up in a cocoon. Yeah, just wrapped up in a, in a cocoon, but like, love, like it has like a, well, maybe even just a zipper. So love, like it hatches yeah. and, then, and then you can get in and out. Yeah. And it's also a fun zipper word. from the cocoon. Inside. Yeah, and, and and it could have like it could, it could be like pickle Rick style. So it has like two holes in the bottom for your for your feet to yeah. go out, so, so you can walk around in a giant cocoon. Yeah, right. And you're it, out in your cocoon. It's like a social you like blocker. <laughs> like you don't have to meet people or, or talk to people. You're just in your cocoon. You do a Zoom with Rob? people. Literally, all they see is your face. <laughs> Like, well, like normally we just, we just see each other's faces, but there's no background. Just, yeah, yeah. just face. Yeah. Just face. Yeah. And like I say, it's a, it's well, a fun word. Cocoon. Like, where's my cocoon? cocoon have yeah. you seen, have you seen my cocoon? Where's my cocoon? I lost my cocoon. It's a fun I'm word. I'm trying to get where there's no background. Hold on. Right there. <laughs> no background. Yeah. There, there's no background there, but you're not in a cocoon and you could be for only $249.95. <laughs> 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 and just think, if you act now, you get a second cocoon for free for the person that's not with you because no one li- anyway. Um, okay. <clears throat> it's uh, a realistic advertisement. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you need a cocoon, you're probably alone. But move, moving on. Uh, but we are in 2021 now. Uh, what are you guys looking most forward to for, for this year? Well, I'm not very optimistic about this whole Corona thing. So I don't know. I was looking, I was really looking forward to tourism picking back up because, mm. you know, foreigners are fun. It's fun to fuck with foreigners. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to let the listeners decide which uh, meaning of that you meant. <laughs> I think both, both of the meanings. <laughs> He's doing, he's doing, he's doing the eyebrow pumps. So I think, I think, I think you don't need visual for this. I mean, we just described what he's doing right now. And the listeners are like, oh, we got it five minutes ago, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> pump, pump. Yeah. <laughs> Commissioner Grayson, pump, pump. Yeah. How's your pump wife? <laughs> for all the Brooklyn nine, nine fans out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you, you are, but you're looking forward to, to getting the, 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 the tourist back. Yeah, yeah, because it means that, you know, I don't have to write that much new new material. There's a new crowd every night. <laughs> so it's laziness. No, that's what this is about. But your well, yeah. word's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a good point. I mean, there there is a... Well, like, the thing is that doing doing comedy to Icelanders versus doing comedy to an international crowd is a very different thing. Oh, yes. It's a very Absolutely. different vibe. I mean, Absolutely. even... Because because the thing is like Icelanders are like if you do it in Icelandic, though it's kind of a specific humor that's very yeah. very appreciated and though liked. And I found found a lot of times though that when you try to do things outside of that, it's almost like Icelanders are having a language barrier <laughs> with their own language. Though, like like what he's not doing wordplay in Icelandic? Is he even a comedian? <laughs> right, well, right, and he's not making fun of the Danes. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> not making fun of the Danish people. I, you know what? I'm out of here. I'm not. No wordplay. No Danish. Yeah. You know, shit talking. I'm done. I'm no, not. No, I'm not. What, what the Icelanders will do, like, is they will think, "Hey, I'm actually funnier than that guy. I'll just shout out my my jokes from the audience and no, uh, it, uh, yeah, I'll, interrupt the whole I'll, show." Experience, huh? Uh, I've I've done a few shows for Icelanders, and uh, yeah, they. <laughs> They think oh, they're funny, huh? Yeah. We're, uh, it's a whole nation of hacklers. <laughs> it's a whole nation of hackers. Yeah. Everybody's a fucking comedian, huh? <laughs> I, love, I like when Danish people come to a, an, an Icelandic comedy show, and, and like they, they're sitting there, they're mad. the Icelander makes a lot of Danish jokes, and the, the Danish person just goes, I, I mean, it, it's pretty funny, but you know, we don't really talk like that. We don't. They, 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 these are not really things that are really appropriate about about us. And <laughs> are you listening to? Yourself? Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then, yeah, then we go out for drinks, and and like five shots in, they're just like, yeah, that's really us. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't all say flutescum all the time. <laughs> Another plus with uh, with uh, you know having tourism here is that we had I, I don't know two to three million visitors in a year so there'd be a really fresh crowd every night so you yeah. can work on your material 
you know, uh, is this funny for everybody or is it a niche joke for the people that go to comedy clubs? Uh, is it, is it, does it work with anyone? It, you know, there's, there's a full range of, of work that you could literally do with different audiences every night where you could really hone your skill. And that's what this is. Being funny is a skill. Yeah. Well, you know, what's interesting is I've also, I've noticed because we've done a, we've done a few, a few, uh, zoom gigs now and uh I've, I've started thinking like doing a zoom gig it's kind of kind of like if you change the the, the drum groove in a song so like if, yeah. if you take like a pop song and you play a pop you know beat to it then you get a pop song and that's kind of like like that's kind of like performing to a crowd having the right yeah. song with the right beat it just fits but then you take a pop song and you throw in like and you change it to like a punk rock beat and like it, it might still work. You might get this, the same song, like or the same song, but it feels different. Yeah. No, there's something yeah. different about it, and that's what yeah. I kind of because like Stepnet and I did a duh, did a gig on Zoom, and it was it was so much fun. I mean, we had a blast. Yeah, it was a great gig. Stepnet was doing well, like like audience, like you know, crowd interaction stuff. Yeah. Like he was doing some crowd work, and ah, and, and it was just so much fun. And that, and then. Uh, I did a gig with with Elva, and then right right as Elva was about to start, because start, she was uh, it was uh, her and the me. She was about to start, and the the person introducing her goes, "All right, now everyone, make sure you turn off your cameras and your audio yeah. before the comedian starts." And all the cameras and all the audio turned off, so it was literally like we were just staring at ourselves yep. in a computer screen, do, right. doing jokes to ourselves. Yeah. And honestly, yeah. but the thing is, I I I made it. Like I, I had so much fun with that gig and no, that's the thing is like, you just have to learn, you have to have fun with whatever you get yeah. because yeah. I just took it as a chance of like, you know what? I don't know if they're laughing. So I'll just, I'll just do this the way that I've always wanted to do these jokes. Yeah. Just tell them the way I would make myself laugh mm -hmm. and make, you know, right. like right. Thoreau and Elva who were in the room, make them laugh. And then if I yeah. do that. Then I had fun, fun, and and you know we boom, we finished. Elva did the same thing. We boom, we finished, and we got we heard back that the you know the group loved the the the, the gig and all that stuff. Yeah. But it was just such a different experience. Yeah, I, I loved. Right. You, were just, you were just like I, I can't hear you guys, but I'm I'm just imagining like a roar of laughter and everybody's applauding. So thank you so much. <laughs> like <laughs> I did, I did one joke in Icelandic that that was like a really really bad dad joke, and yeah. the, and the, and because there was like dead silence, I'm like. You know, I'm just going to something like I'm going to assume that none of you are, are laughing or making any noise because that's appropriate for this joke. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing with these Zoom gigs is that you, you while you see yourself in the in the screen, you can work on like facial expressions and that sort of thing. So yeah. when you have a really, you know, when you when crowds come back, when you have a really intimate crowd, when you have like a room full of, uh, I don't know, 30 to 40 people. Mm -hmm you can really work your face and, and, you know, do the eyebrow things and, and, uh, you know, all this little yeah, yeah. stuff that we do. And, uh, yeah, work, it gives you an opportunity to, <laughs> yeah, exactly. work that face. Yeah. yeah, I agree. And it, oh, that's why like, it's all, it's also like, oh, it's, I mean, to, to continue the, the musical meta metaphors, I guess it is also like, like a, a an electric guitar player practicing on acoustic guitar because it's harder. I mean, you do the Zoom yeah. gigs to get good at being on stage because once you get on stage, it feels like second nature. Well, once yeah. you get used to doing the Zoom gigs. Yeah. That's a, that's yeah. a good point. I, and I, I, love, I love that. I actually love that about that because it's something that's pushing us to, to, to be uncomfortable and build the skills while, while being uncomfortable. Because you can't, yeah. I mean, if you, if you cancel a gig, I mean, like you cancel a gig, it uh, sucks, but you know, some uh, stuff comes up, you cancel a zoom gig and it almost feels shittier <laughs> because of the fact that it, like a zoom gig doesn't feel like you're on stage. It doesn't even feel like stand up. It just, it's not, not really stand up mm. because it's almost like we're just doing this, like having a cup, a conversation with some of our friends yeah. and yeah. just telling them it's our like material. A, yeah. It's like a cross between, you know, talking to a friend, uh, sharing material and, I don't know, uh, a spoken word type, type of lecture thing, mm -hmm. you know, cause you're not getting the immediate feedback. Yeah. And exactly. also you don't have to do this with pants. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, you can, you can, you can do this in, in uh, just your pajamas or 
I do yeah, it in my yeah, slippers. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I do it in my in my slippers. The, uh, yeah, and every once in a while, like I'll, I'll wear pants that have like paint stains on them. <laughs> yeah, you know, right. and no one, no, no one can see it because I go waist up. Yeah, yeah, but you do. Well, have what I'm doing st- <laughs> you do have to worry about about though uh, the like the background. I mean, that is something that is important yeah. Yeah, because if you don't, if you have like a distracting background or something, that takes away from the comedy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's amazing That's how. True. Qu- it's amazing how quickly just one feature in the room can completely derail a comedy show yeah. just because everyone's yeah. focus is on the wrong thing. Yeah. Right. Right. And also, if you're if you're doing it with your phone, you don't want to move around a lot because people get dizzy watching <laughs> everything. I don't know. Yeah. What's up? What's happening? <laughs> yeah. I love. I like that. See, oh, thought No, we were joking because like oh, we're we're like here here in Games Studio, the oh, the wall is just painted white. So, so we were right. well, we were duck, do, or duking it. We were we were, we were doing a, a video, and it looked like we were we were in like a ransom video. Yeah, <laughs> that's and true. That, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. And then thought out was like, well, what if I just put like a ah uh, brick wall behind me, like a virtual brick wall, and I put that, and then he moves his arm, and his arm just disappears because of the glitch. <laughs> yeah, we we stuck with the uh, hostage situation yeah 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 stuck with that for now yeah but that's something in 2021 and, that we and, hope to to fix up a bit is, and, is and games that, studio yeah. i mean you have the right look for the hostess uh, i have uh, yes oh, that has been said to me <laughs> ah, at one or all airports um <laughs> that's just a pain but with the show i mean what are, what are we you know i mean 2021 is happening hopefully the you know the clubs and bars will start opening up again you know within the next few months mm. We'll, we'll get the show back on stage. Well, like I said, I think it would be great to keep doing, you know, to, to add Zoom to to, yeah. to the to the aspect of it. Get, you know, a, Absolutely. Just, uh, a yeah. camera going on stage and yeah. we can have a virtual audience as well. Virtual. I, yeah. Yeah. I think that would be great. I we, We've been talking about maybe doing another uh, Voices for Charity. Oh, yeah. And it expands uh, our audience and, uh, you know, people can, people can uh, con- contribute to the charities through through from wherever they are so yeah, yeah absolutely yeah yeah if, if uh actually if anyone is listening to, into this uh the, that's maybe not nice and you want to be a part of uh, uh of voices for charity too when we get it when we get it going send us a message ma, message at info at mv M- i can't even talk today no. info at mvht show.com oh that's info at mvht show.com send us a message uh let us know uh you know we I, I, wow! I mean, we did this uh, a couple years ago, just yeah. in Iceland, yeah. and it was it was amazing. We had what twenty sponsors. And, yeah, uh, it was crazy. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I'd love to. Ma- if we're gonna do this again, I'd love to make it bigger. I'd, uh, I'd love to take it on a you know a larger scale. Go bigger, or go home. Go bigger, go home. Home. We're when it comes to the charity game, we go bigger. We go okay. Um, <laughs> <coughs> but we are we are hoping to do that. We're yeah. we are hoping to travel eventually. I know. Yeah. I know that. Oh, like in Finland, they were they were hoping to get us back oh, this year because we couldn't go last year. But but I think we yeah. may have to wait. Oh, we may have to wait on that one. Yeah. Uh, but I would yeah. love to oh, love to do more traveling with you guys. I, I would love to as well. Yeah, absolutely. I'll try not go crazy this time. To try try not to go crazy. Well, well, I mean, you are working on a, on material about it. So is it? That's true. Uh, that's true. It's a really weird thing, though. I mean, I know we've talked about this before, but it really is weird when you have <laughs> things like. Things like you know tech attacks and manic episodes and and being thought outler, you know you have all these things that that like you know like <laughs> they suck when they're happening. <laughs> yeah, that just, that just made that sta- statement wow. so much meaner. Wow, it suck when it's happening. I'm <laughs> happening. I'm I'm always happening. It's my life. <laughs> like the, no, but the, you know, but these the the things from our disorders, like it sucks when they happen. But Bob, but you know when we when we sit and try to find ways of you know making them fun or making. Them a little bit more, you know, funny. Yeah, it does That's make very a difference. That's it very therapeutic. It is insanely therapeutic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's cathartic, and it's also it's also like a new outlook on things. And I've I've advised people to do this. That uh, you know you know want to do stand up comedy if you're having a shit day. Instead right. of thinking, man, this is a fucking shit day. Think to yourself, all right. So how can I use this next Thursday or whenever you have a gig? You know. How how do I use this? You know, it helps me. Oh, it ha- helps so much. But yeah. there is a, there is something we we t- Thoreau and I talked about it on the podcast at one point, and it was about you, Stepner, uh, and uh, like 
uh, Alain, I actually wanted to talk to you about it because the thing is, there are some moments though, like I remember you were telling me a story about saw something that happened in Finland and I said, oh, this would be great for your next bit. And you said, well, isn't it a bit personal? Lola, right. you, you, you were kind of reluctant right. to actually do material about it yeah. because of how, how t- no, intense it was. What, right. I mean, you know, there are still going to be those those things that happen that we go, you know sure. what, this one, this one's not even on the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, but I also think that, uh, you know, it might be that, that factor of too soon, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because you know, comedy is often just, what, tragedy plus time. Yeah. Maybe you just give it a little more time and then it's funny. Yeah. 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 You know, once you've shared it with, with like your, your closest family and friends and all of that stuff and it's sort of out there and you've sort of let it go for yourself, mm-hmm. you know, then maybe you can write some stuff about it. And it doesn't have to be like detailed, totally truthful stuff. It might just be like, Ooh, if I extrapolate on this bit, like a little bit, yeah. You know, if I, if I tweak this a little bit, if I, if I outright lie a bunch about this <laughs> thing, <laughs> yeah, you know, make it funny. Yeah. Funny, you know I mean? yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's like, you know, once you've worked through it, once you, you know, I, if you do it through therapy or if you do it through just, you know, on your own or whatever, once you've worked through it and it's not like a, it's not like an issue that you can't even discuss with, your therapist or your family or anything like that. It's something that you openly discuss. I think, you know, there's, if there's a will, there's a way to make it funny. Well, I think, I think one of the big things with this, and this is like, this is, this is going to sound like a lot like a PC type of topic, but it's, it's not, it's really not. The thing is at the, at the end of the day, uh, like everything can be joked about and not, and, and there are some things that maybe should be joked about as a way of helping us feel better about them, you know, but but there are, there are topics that are not wise to joke about because of, because of, you know, not just reactions to other people from other people, but your own reactions to to joking about things. But what, what, you know, the most important thing though, is just thinking about why you're making the joke. Why, Mm. why you're, how you're doing the joke. Why, what is your intention? What is the purpose of of making the joke? Are you doing it to, to help build yourself up? Or are you doing yeah. it just to put people down? Because if, because that, yeah. that really makes a hell Absolutely. of a difference. Like I did, I do, I, I do a joke on stage, a stage about about tick attacks, and I, I would talk to someone with Tourette's syndrome uh, not long after I started doing that, and they were like, "How the hell did you like? Did you feel comfortable doing a joke about tick attacks? No, oh, those are some of the most terrifying. That's like one of the most terrifying things about Tourette's syndrome." And I I said honestly, because then I have I have one again. And I can deal with it better yeah. because I'm not as, I'm not as yeah. afraid. I know how, I yeah. know what's going to happen. It's like a panic attack. Well, mm-hmm. once you know what's going to happen, oh, yeah. yeah, you can deal with it better and you feel better about dealing with it. And then maybe, uh, maybe you end up having a little bit of a laugh and that calms you down. Yeah. Yeah. But and it is you, terrifying. Yeah. yeah. And it works for me with like, I, I often have performing performance anxiety, you know, and, uh, and uh, before a show, I'll be, terrified you know what i mean but uh, talking about how terrified i am uh actually eases me into the set you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. i have a bit where i start the show with you know talking about how nervous i am and i you know giggle like a moron and and <laughs> i even i even once got an awe from, <laughs> you know so it Aww. just puts me at ease. yeah so it, so that works out, and I bet you, I bet you it happens to you sort of that when when you talk about your social anxiety, it yeah. sort of makes it easier for you to you know if somebody approaches you after the show, they know you have social anxiety, so they go, "Hey, uh, I don't want to bother you, and I'm sorry." Yeah, and, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah people, so people, it makes the whole thing easier. Yeah, people come up to me and say, "Hey, I also have social anxiety." I'm like, "Yeah, you wouldn't be talking to me if you really." <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know. It's- <laughs> You know what's funny about this? Uh, I was watching a video on YouTube. It was like celebrities meeting their celebrity crush. Yeah. And Kesha is apparently a huge fan, fan of, of Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she went to meet him and she's like, can I get a hug? And he's like, no. And she, she's like, she's like, no, come on, come on. Can I please just get a hug? And he's like, I'd rather not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, he just really genuinely did not want to give her a hug. Yeah. And it wasn't that he was trying to be rude. It's no. just some people do not like hugs. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I was I was kind of thinking about like if we ever did like a big show show and people came up to us afterward like <laughs> like oh you're so great can I ah, can I give you a hug and it's just like I I'm... prefer you don't <laughs> please don't yeah I'm that guy <laughs> yeah 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 I mean, I, I mean hugs are are reserved for like close friends and family we're gonna if we ever get big enough that that we have like a like a merch booth, like a signing booth <laughs> ah, after a show, we're going to have to have like, like the person running the booth. Like it, it'll be like Jess, you know, <laughs> our, our, like she'll be the, like the manager and merch booth uh, person. And she, she goes, okay. So everyone waiting in line, just so you know, the performers will be out in just a minute. Uh, just so you know, not all of them like hugs. <laughs> so if you're, if you're asking for any, any physical contact, please ask before you go for it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll start with you in the front. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your hands to yourself. Keep your hands to your, keep your hands and feet inside the <laughs> the vessel at all times. But that's another thing, you know, being autistic and that sort of thing. My resting face, you know, my resting bitch face. Uh, <laughs> now I can hide it with a with a mask. You know what I mean? And I don't have to emote as much. You know, usually uh, usually in a social interaction or or when I'm talking to somebody who's new to me and that sort of thing, my face sort of freezes and I have to consciously uh, make facial gestures, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, now that I got the mask on, I don't really have to do that anymore. So people think I might be smiling or think I might be blah, blah, you know, <laughs> given the tone of whatever I'm saying. Now it's all about tone. And I've gotten pretty good at tone. You have, got, you have gotten, got, gotten pretty good at it. I mean, to be <laughs> fair, you've, got, you've gotten a lot of practice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. It, it helps when you're in a group like us. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are really talkative. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love though when 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 we we do something and Step there picks up on it on it, and it's almost like there's a bit of pride because he's he's like, oh, I picked up on it. <laughs> well, like I want, like I remember when we were when we were in uh, Sweden. He uh, well, like I was having a, a trouble with dissociation, and like there would be moments where I'd just be like gone, you yeah, know, yeah. you know, and Stepner looked at me once and he went, you're dissociating. And, and I had like a little bit of a smile on his face <laughs> and I'm, in my head. I'm going, this isn't a funny moment, but yeah, I am. And he, he goes, I picked up on that. I'm getting it. All right. So that's what you look like when you're doing that. And I'm like, yeah, that is, wait, how do I look? <laughs> hey, yeah, you're, 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 right. you're, yeah, you're miserable right now. Yes, I, I, I picked up on that. <laughs> hey, that's good. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. I really want to keep learning this. The more you dissociate, the more I fucking pick up on it. Yeah, it's a, it's not like Dory and Finding Nemo, except instead of just keep swimming, it's just keep dissociating. Just keep dissociating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. yeah, yeah, definitely dissociate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Charlie Babbitt. <laughs> But thought thought dollar what's up? what's going to be your favorite thing of 2021 Well if if we can start performing again in front of audiences uh <laughs> I'm actually I want to do two specials two specials Yeah yeah cuz you've been talking about wanting to do another special Yeah uh because I I think I have enough material to I do it in, understand uh, that. What <laughs> Okay, that was my phone for some reason. Came well, alive. try to make her understand. <laughs> Apparently, it doesn't have a lot of faith in you because, you know, you want to do two specials? I don't understand <laughs> that. Why would you want <laughs> Why would you even want to do one? <laughs> even my phone doesn't believe in me. Oh, I, thought, <laughs> I thought I thought I thought your phone just turned like like became like like step there uh, with uh, with autism. <laughs> just like I don't understand your tone. I do not compute. <laughs> but what happened? Did I press it or something? I don't know. I just what, what I just happened? heard it start talking to you, and I was just <laughs> so, I was just like I I mean Siri, we're doing a, a thing here. Yeah. So I've already done a special in uh, Icelandic, uh, but I think I have enough material to do in English. Okay. And. But then I want to do like a new one in Icelandic as well. I'm, I'm working on a new one in Icelandic as well. And so, your your original special, cool. sorry, sorry to cut you off, but it is available online. It is. I, I actually posted on just uh, YouTube yesterday, and it's now free for everybody. But it's it's in Icelandic, so two views. <laughs> no, actually, like uh, yeah, almost a hundred in one day. So no, I mean, I, no, no, that, which in Iceland is viral. <laughs> 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 yeah. But uh, I mean, yeah, it, but it's in Icelandic, so yeah, uh, yeah. 
but I want to do an, in Eng- uh, one in English as well. So. It's so it's so weird uh, when whoa, when something goes viral in Iceland, uh, like and it gets like oh, like a hundred thousand views or so, so something like that, uh, and people in the, st- the states are like, "That's not viral. <laughs> but that's that's just like my Thursday." <laughs> and then we're like, "No, but you don't understand. <laughs> There's only three hundred thousand of us. Uh, that's a third of the country." Yeah, I w- I once did a like a sketch and it got a hundred ten thousand views, and I, I'm still like, I'm still high on that. You know, just. <laughs> on, it's like I got 110,000 views on one video, and you haven't been successful since. <laughs> no, not. I mean, that was the highlight. You know, I don't, I don't need to try anymore. It was your peak. Yeah, <laughs> you hit your peak, and you're just like, all right, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> True. Screw you guys. I'm self quarantining. Yeah. What's what's quarantining? You'll find out next year. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that would that would have been yeah. hilar- hilarious. Just or like, bah, I think that's gonna be the bah, the big thing now is like when someone's just giving up, like they're like they hit their peak. They're yeah, they're dumb. They they got all the success they wanted. They just want to be a, a, like at home alone now. They're gonna yeah. be like be like, all right, that's it. I'm in the corn- quarantining again. Yeah, Where, where's my cocoon? <laughs> where's my where's my cocoon? We're just <laughs> rotating back to the bah, back to the. <laughs> But we, but uh, well, and we'll definitely do a lot of promoting for that when well, when you when you do those specials, I'm very excited for them. I mean, yeah, you've got I great mean, material. I, I hope hope uh, I will be able to do it. You know, just get the chance to do it. You know, I mean, you, you've got like what what two two hours on Club Dub, <laughs> something, something <laughs> like that. Yeah, that's a, uh, yeah, that's one of the new material I'm working on. So yeah. a joke for the Icelanders. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> basically. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, I'm also talking about specials. Uh, I've also wanted to headline for for one of those fringe shows. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have like a twenty to thirty minute spot and just have someone warm up for me, one of you guys or something. Cool. You know, because you know, I yeah. want the spotlight, man. But, <laughs> yeah, well, that's something we've been talking about for a while. Because I mean, yeah, when okay. I did when I did Squeak for the first time, and I, I'm not just talking about when I was a kid and squeaked for the first time, no. but when. I, you did a special called I Squeak. I did. I did a special call called Squeak, or Squeak, which I'm actually hoping, well, when the pandemic's over, I want to start traveling with it. Yeah. yeah. But uh, and then record it, right? And but the thing is that the, that like I did. I did that. You you've done done a, a few s- solo shows. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, we were talking to to Stepner and Elva about the fa the fact that I mean Stepner could easily do a show called Mister Crazy. We <laughs> I mean we we've, we've been talking about that for a while. Yeah. Ella, Elva has a perfect one called Moving Target, which if you see her perform, <laughs> you, you understand it's a perfect title. Yep. Yeah, it's so good. And I mean, I mean, I would love to get, I, ah, even if it's not this year, I mean, even if, even if things get tough and we don't have time to work on, on shows next year, let's, I mean, we should all just have a, a, a new show mm-hmm. and we'll like, let's support each other. You know, if we need opening acts, we'll just, you know, yeah. uh, you know, perform yeah. at the beginning of each other's shows. Yeah. And that, I, I might be busy that night. Though. I might be busy yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You know. Go. You know. Yeah. No. Go of take yourself. <laughs> ah. Um. I can say that because I have Tourette's. But you. Well, you can still say it. I don't care. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I would love to see that. I mean, you would. Def- you definitely have enough uh, material for it. Thanks, man. I mean, you've gotten yourself up to a. I mean, easily thirty minutes. Solid. Probably, yeah. Oh, solid thirty minutes. I mean, you were like, like. Uh, I mean, even now with the Zoom gigs, you're doing a solid twenty. Right, right. Yeah. So I mean, he and I love. I love. Stemner has this thing like when he when he gets so used to his material, nah, then he starts playing around with it. Yeah. Because like he had, he had moments in the Zoom gig where where he was he was just like doing stuff that was brand new, and uh, I was laughing my ass off, and yeah. I've heard the material thousands yeah. of times. That, that's the thing like he was he was uh saying that uh you know i want to get the tourists back so you can you can do your material uh more often you can you can practice the better mm. you know your material the better you, you more that you can play around with it yeah and Absolutely, that's the most yeah. that's, the, that's the most fun part when you just like you have a solid set and then you just can play around uh with it and uh, you know something new gets born and and you can like oh i can use that now as part of this, yeah. Uh, so I, I love I get, love, I get, love creating something new uh, uh, on the spot. Right. You know. You know that. I have a weird euphemism for when you're working with a crowd. Uh, it's like peeing. Working <laughs> I, with a crowd. I, I, is I, I, like- I, I already like this. You don't. Even have to, <laughs> you don't even have to say one word more. It's just uh, like, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> 
I love it. When you get when you get the first laugh, it's like when you start. When you really have to pee, you know, and then you let it go, and it's just like Bawr! when you get the first laugh. Yeah. But that silence that you have, where where people are just waiting for the next thing that you say, that's like at the end of it when you go, <laughs> you know. <laughs> But when you get a laugh out of your friends, that's like if you got a bonus fart while you were doing it. <laughs> Dude, you got to tell this on stage sometime. Yes. That's, that's, that's a really good analogy. But but then yeah. then then you uh, at the end you're kind of trying to squeeze another one out. You know, you, like, yeah. you get you're getting don't desperate. Yeah, you don't yeah. squeeze out the, the last no. droplets. No, you know. <laughs> no. So when you're when just you're, one more yeah. laugh, just one more laugh, squeeze it out. Yeah. You know. So what you're saying is saying is when you have like when you when you have a really bad, like really rough set, and you only get like a small small handful of laughs, that's yeah. like when you've got a blockage. So you, yeah. you, you yeah. pee like a little totally. bit, and then you can't get the rest out yeah. for a while. And that's that's why you shouldn't have sex before a set, <laughs> because, <laughs> because your jokes will go sideways. You know. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> They might split down the middle and go sideways. That's true. <laughs> Wait, Bob, but there is a there there is a flaw to this yeah. because when you when you drink, mm. you have to pee a lot, Bob. But you don't necessarily get laughter. That is true. That's yeah. true. Uh, that's that's true. the only that's the only flaw. I'm sorry to point out the flaw the flaw, but I mean to an otherwise great analogy, yeah. Bob. But <laughs> hey, if you, I mean, you could probably work that into making sense. <laughs> yeah. No, they, this is good. You, you, this is uh, you should you should do this on on stage. That's material, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you do drink a lot of water, and then you have to pee. Yeah. So you could be sober yeah. drinking. I I don't compute. Yeah. <laughs> or, no, no. When you drink I alcohol, I don't understand. When you, I don't understand what you're saying. When you drink alcohol, you're peeing a lot, but it's only you that's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. You're laughing yeah. the whole time, but it's just yeah. you. Yeah, but that's half the battle. If you can make yourself laugh during a set, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when you have a really, really good joke that you yeah. love, but it hardly ever gets a laugh, you yeah. still say it, and then you just go, <laughs> <laughs> "Come on, you guys!" <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like the the, the thing that, that Jim Carrey said, and I really, I really appreciate this quote. Is well, when he's he's like doing a, an interview. And he, start, he starts laughing at his own joke. And then he's like, I mean, if you can't laugh at your own joke, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. a good point yeah. because, because like, I've noticed like people don't like it when the comedian laughs. Mm. I've not, I've, I've genuinely noticed that. Like whenever a comedian starts laughing, like, ah, I've noticed there are a decent number of people that are just like, ah, that he's, just, he thinks he should, funny? he should, he shouldn't be laughing at his own jokes. That's, yeah. that takes yeah. away from, from, from it. And I'm like, no, he, that just shows that he really, he or she really enjoys what they're yeah. doing. I mean, yeah. and especially if it's like, like if they're coming up with something on the spot and they laugh at it, that that's kind of yeah. that, that shows that oh, did they, he just make that up like on the spot? You know, yeah, like, it can be. Yeah, yeah. That's, the thing, that's the thing. Maybe that you know, an audience member, the regular Joe might not pick up on, but you know, thinks he's cocky. But uh, for us, uh, for us comedians, when you see like a genuine. <laughs> Like I came up with that. Well, I've not, and and I've noticed there are there are certain reactions from from, from, like when the well when the comedian does certain things that you can get away with them, and the crowd likes it. I mean, because they like the genuine aspect of of the comedy. Mm -hmm. So so Mm -hmm. like, uh, and they like the vulnerability. So so that's why, like when you're doing an open mic, for example, and you you've told a joke a thousand times, right? But then that one open mic, you try like like. On the spot, you come up with something mm-hmm. and you say it, and then it just whoa works beautifully. And then you laugh yourself, and then you literally say to the audience, "I just thought about that. I'm yeah. glad this was recorded." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, yeah. those moments, because people are with you when you're writing the joke. Yeah. The, that's why they, yeah. they love those moments. Yeah. But of course, if you do yeah. that during a special, you should have had your special written already. Oh yeah. You know yeah. there yeah. there is there is that aspect of it. I mean, sometimes sure. Yeah, sometimes something happens like. Uh, during taping a special, like somebody stands up in the uh, like the audience, goes to pee right. or something, and they riff on that, or somebody like something. I mean, you can't write that, of course. You can't write something unexpected happening. Right. So, so that's that's always uh, fun, you know. And you can see, like, oh, and you might he, get he, a, he, yeah, and you might get a dickhead that heckles during a during a recording of a special. Yeah, you know, yeah. and and if you're really good at dealing with hackers, that's like. Oh man, did he burn that guy? You yeah. know what I mean? Well, I think I think the thing is that 
Oh, like you were saying, thought thought earlier about how people like to thought like to. It's like they want they want to believe that the comedian is thinking of, of everything on the spot. Yeah, thaw, that's yeah. why crowd work and like if it's good, it's uh, such a special moment because people get to mm-hmm. be there for, for the writing. Thaw, they get to be there when the magic is happening. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thaw, so yeah. like thaw, like and Dave Chappelle is so so stupidly good at this. And thaw, this is why I've been watching him oh, a lot. Uh, as of the past year yeah. because he has this thing that he does that I've, I've, I've taught, like I've heard comedians talk about, but, but never really saw it perfect perfected this way is he, he can stand on stage and just look at the audience yeah. and the audience starts laughing yeah. because they're just like, something's brewing in there. Yeah. He, he's thinking of something yeah. really fucking oh, he's funny. A he's yeah, about, he's a, he's yeah, he's goat. about, and, and that's all like, he'll tell a joke and like half, like halfway through one statement, like he'll just, like look at a different part of the audience yeah. and like, and it's just like, you see the look on his face and you're just with him the whole time. Yeah. Like you don't even want to heckle because you're just like, no, this is about to be better than anything I could have thought yeah. of. I don't want to ruin this moment. Ah, <laughs> I don't want to ruin this moment. And that's why I, yeah. ah, that's why I think he is like every comedian. Well, ah, like if you, it, whether you like or dislike his, his material, mm. just watch how he performs it. And well, ah, like listen to the reactions from Absolutely the crowd, the best. Yeah. like yeah. listen for when they react, like how, yeah. how they react. I mean, just those, those moments of silence yeah. that he has are are beautiful. One of the most yeah. incredible things he's uh, that he did was one of his specials. He 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 told the punchline before. Yeah, he said, "I'm that good. I'm going to tell you the punchline, <laughs> but you're yeah. still going to laugh." And he he tells you the punchline, goes into the joke, and then the punchline comes, and you burst out laughing, even though you yeah. know the punchline. Yeah, yeah, he's, that was he's amazing. That, I yeah. that was well, amazing. There is a there is something I heard about the, that though, like our, our mutual friend uh, York Underwood yeah. was talking about this. He said the thing about about comedy though is uh, there are many times where the the audience actually wants to know the the punchline before you say it because a part of uh, a, a certain level of enjoyment comes from from anticipating what you're gonna say. Be yeah. because if they yeah. it, because if they if they know what you're gonna say before you say it, then it's almost like like. They're like, oh, I wrote it with them. Yeah. No, and it's yeah. like that, that 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 feeling that the yeah. audience member is. Yeah, we're together more, in this. Yeah, exactly. Like they're more a part of it that, than just sitting yeah. there listening. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it feels like a conversation, so people yeah. get involved. Yeah, I think it's also like really if if you kind of lead them into thinking this is where you're going. Of course. Oh, that's, that's my favorite oh, yeah. route. Uh, and because so I mean, what, what, one of the number one key of, of comedy is surprise of course that's yeah like, yeah. You know, yeah yeah you, you, they think you're going somewhere and then you go complete opposite you know or something so that's, that's the way, way he took it man yeah, yeah. and it's fun it's oh, i love that style of comedy though because you get the audience with you for the whole time like yeah. and they're just like i know where he's going with this i know where he's going yeah. with it and then you take a like a hard left turn and yeah. they're just like whoa that clever motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, boom! But we are we are unfortunately getting to the end of uh, of our first episode bah, in 2021. Wow! Woo-hoo. First of all, that deserves a clap. We. I would. I'm holding my phone. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, we'll just get a thum thum thum. Yeah. If he, he does it. But uh, you, you can add like afterwards, like a, uh, uh, just a roar of applause. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, boom, but Thoraller and Stemner, thank you guys both for joining me on this. Bah, it's been an absolute yeah, blast having you. I think this is my favorite episode of the year. Ah, oh, ah, I, I have to agree. Yeah. I mean, we we. Ha- oh, you're out. You're out, Stephanie. I can see your uh, lips moving, but I can't hear you. No, we don't hear you. What happened? What happened? I'm taking well, well, over well, here. Wait, wait, we like we we taping over here. Hey, welcome to Brooklyn. What we're taking over here today? <laughs> <laughs> what, what's what's going on? Forget about it. What 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 what, 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 what are we doing? Whew. Should we uh, well, maybe call him back or we're gonna call you back? <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna call him back. You should not edit this. Just keep it awkward. <laughs> Just keep the whole thing. We are constant. Uh, uh, we are currently recalling. All right, do we hear you? Uh, am I on? Yeah, you, you are on. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> what were you saying? 
Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no editing. Um, but anyway, um, <laughs> but both of you, seriously, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, to the listeners, oh, thanks for um, having me. Oh, to the listeners, thank you for, for listening. If you ever have any topics or questions that you want us to discuss on the, the podcast, or maybe you want to be like Charlotte Curry and actually be on the podcast. Well, yep. well she didn't. She, that wasn't really what she was asking for. No. But, but, but we, you know, we thought she would be a great guest, and turns out she was an amazing guest. Oh, if, you, yeah. if anyone's listening out there, maybe you want to be on the podcast. Send us a, an email at info at mvhtshow dot com. That's info at mvhtshow dot com. Uh, if well, if you're listening to this song, Spotify or Apple Podcasts or any of that stuff, you know, be sure to like and follow, follow, subscribe, whatever it is. Uh, and yeah, give us you know a five star review if you loved the podcast. If you hated it, give us a one star review. Tell us why you hated it. We want to make this is you know great for everyone and just make it the best that it can be. Um, or or just give us five stars, like in a sarcastic way. Yeah, do it, do it, do it because like like and and, uh, and let like yeah, do it and let us know that you don't really mean it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, gave you five stars, but I, I don't really mean it. I really hate. Right, and if yeah. you if you like the, the the podcast and you want to support us, check out paypal.me slash mvht show. That's paypal.me slash mvht show with a squeak at the end. Um, and also this episode has been brought to you by Gamesle Studio, where we are recording the Secret Cellar Ice's first and only comedy club, and Smarty's Volcano Sauces, the greatest hot sauces I've ever had in my entire life. Uh, and uh, 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 other than that, uh, <laughs> I want the secret cellar to be open again. I know, I know. It'll it'll be I want, soon. I want it will be, be soon. <laughs> to be there. But other other than that, thank you all so much for listening, and uh, check out new episodes every Tuesday. Mm-hmm.